Hey everybody, this is Rob, and I wanted to share with you a snapshot of my dad's life. I gave this mug to him years ago for Father's Day, best dad ever. And it's the one thing from their house I really wanted to have back because to me, this typifies the message I wanna share with you today that um, grace, whether it's being a dad or being saved, it's all by grace, isn't it? None of us are perfect, we all make a lot of mistakes. My dad made his mistakes, I've made mine, and I'm sure you've made yours. But the great thing when it comes to our relationship with God, there's only one thing that makes it right, and that's salvation through Christ alone, putting our faith in Him. Not, a, not as a result of works that we do, but through His washing and regeneration, through the death of Christ on the cross, where He paid the penalty for our sin, and then rose again, was in the grave three days, rose again, and he's coming again. He is the savior of the world. We shared this message with my dad over the years many times, and it was during hospice that John, my oldest brother, my wife Joanne, and myself sat there on the bed with my dad. He just had a couple of months left and shared the gospel. And he said, you know, I'm saved. I don't need that. And we lovingly pressed the issue and said, dad, we don't think you do. And with all due respect, we love you, but salvation is only through faith in Christ and you must come like a little child because my dad had put his faith in the things he'd done, the religions he'd been involved in and activities and good works. And as we talked to him, his heart softened and it was at that moment that he humbly and quietly said, I need that. Yes, I want to put my faith in Christ. He bowed his head and trusted Christ that day. And when we were done, one really neat statement that he made to all three of us, he grabbed us and looked at us just passionately. He said, this was a great session. This is the best session we've ever had. And I knew what he meant by that because we talked a lot over the years. And my dad was over 90 years old, 93. And so we'd had a lot of discussions about the gospel before in the past. And few months later my dad passed away and I'm going to show some highlights here of um, the funeral that he just had. He was a veteran captain in the, the Air Force Medical Corps. Well, I was talking to John about um, my dad and I said, you know, John, I had a real prayer that I've been praying for dad all of the last few years and that's that he would come to Christ and be able to do just great things for God and and go places and do things. He's a medical doctor, but yet this is how it ended. I'm glad he's put his faith in Christ, but I regret the fact that not much came of it beyond that. And my brother made a statement that really impacted me and has really opened my eyes to the glory of this whole story. He said, you know, isn't that the whole message of the gospel? That it's nothing that we do, nothing that we add to, grace, no good works we do, like the thief on the cross, we put our faith in him, and that's dad's story. He added nothing to it, and no good work to take up there, if you will, other than faith. And it's like the parable where Jesus said many went out to the field and worked, and some worked all day, part of the day, an hour, and some just right at the last minute, they all got the same pay. And illustrating the grace of Christ that uh, has been extended to my dad, and when I meditated on that story, it made me realize just how amazing grace really is. And I hope that encourages somebody out there today because my dad's story is not becoming a medical missionary or going and preaching like Billy Graham to um, the pygmies in Africa or doing something just dramatic and amazing. It's a story of simply childlike faith before it was too late that has enabled him to enter in to heaven Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. And for by grace you are saved through faith, that not of yourself. It's a free gift of God, not as a result of works, lest any man should boast. And so my dad's story is a story of grace, like my story, like some of your story, and maybe future stories of people hearing this and evaluating. It's not religion, it's not good works. It is faith in Jesus Christ. And so let's, those of us that know the Lord, be more and more humble and more and more grateful and thankful. Every day is, is a gift from God. And salvation is the most wonderful gift ever. 
Nothing even compares remotely with it. Our treasure is in heaven and our citizenship is in heaven. My dad is there, my mom's there, and I can't wait to, to be with him. And while we're waiting, we're gonna do his will. So God bless you. And I'll put on now a few clips of my dad's funeral. And thank you for listening to this. God bless you. I met everybody. My name is Dave Matthews. I'm one of the pastors at Broadway Presbyterian Church with a Brandon's attended worship service there for many years. And uh, Mrs. Brandon Ruth has passed away February of this year. And the reason we are out here, this beautiful cemetery, it's really nice out here, uh, is because Dr. Brandon served in the Air Force as a medical doctor. And we are here in his memory. Uh, Dr. Lloyd Clarence Brannan, and we are here to, as a service to him, as a memorial, but we're also here, another reason we're here is to lift up, lift up our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. 
Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works that no one may boast. Uh, both those verses mention about a wonderful gift that's been offered to you. A gift of what we call salvation, to come into a right relationship with the, Jesus Christ. And uh, Christ uh, gives us hope of an unending life. In him we know that life will never end. Now, Dr. Brandon, I believe, was 93 years old. Not bad, is it? <laughs> How would you like to live for eternity? Uh, life is brief. It says in the book of James in the New Testament, uh, it's like a vapor. It's here and gone. Like a puff of smoke on a cold winter day. You, you blow out and you see a little frost in the air and all of a sudden it's gone. Well, Dr. Brandon had an interesting journey in spiritual life. Uh, from where he came, from his background, but he did make a wonderful profession of faith. And right now at this time, as much as it's pleased Almighty God and His wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, he therefore commit his body, body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, awaiting the hour when all who are in their graves will hear the voice of the Son of God and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of the life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of judgment. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep or grieved like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Is he in here?